Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we've got the flashback out. We are at a cool interior spot. We're gonna use several different shooting methods and pull them together and try to get a perfect photo. So you can hopefully watch this and see what do you wanna implement into your own shooting style and really just use it for troubleshooting when you're at these locations and having to problem solve day in and day out. So let's get into it. All right, so first we are going to try some HDR photos set up at this one point perspective and we're going to bounce the flash off these back walls depending on what is going to look the most natural. We're also going to do a shot pointed straight towards the window so we can pull that in in post and we've got a little bit of the kitchen in the shot too so we're going to need to put a flash up here for another layer. That should fill this in nice and soft. Then we're gonna basically have every option you would want in the edit. So we're definitely overshooting this, but if you're new and wanna try different editing techniques, it might be fun to try this out on a shoot and see what you can do in the edit because you're gonna have so many options. All right, so first we're gonna set up our HDR bracket. So we're just using auto bracket at negative three plus three and zero. So I'm focusing on the coffee table and then setting that middle exposure and letting the camera do the rest. So we got these three layers and here's how I'm gonna edit them real quick. So we just merged them in Lightroom and selected a white balance spot on something that's white. And then I'm gonna use a preset that basically is going to set the contrast, pull up the shadows, pull down the highlights, and give it a little bit of a punchy look. So that's pretty much it. I think it gives us a pretty nice natural looking result. There's a little bit of a extra color cast in this one, but it's not too bad. All right, on to the next method, which is flash. So here's what it's gonna look like. Now we're gonna break that down into every single step. So for the exposure, I'm gonna go ahead and knock it down a little bit to where the bright stuff is not gonna to be too overexposed, but it's still gonna be pretty bright. That way we have the most ambient light to work with. Got my flash trigger set to one half power to try that out and we'll see where we're at. So I'm just gonna bounce it off this back right corner first. It's usually a good call because there's windows on that side of the house, so it's gonna look pretty natural. Okay, so it looks pretty good. There's a couple little hot spots, but you'll see how we can fix that later using an ambient darker layer. In Lightroom, the first thing we're gonna do as always is set our white balance based on something that's white. Then we're gonna use a preset. Uh, you can copy these settings that are on my Lightroom too if you don't have the presets. My presets do a couple other things, but they are pretty simple at getting you to a good starting point for your edit and speeding things up. Okay, so we're just adjusting some of the settings like the exposure and the color balance just a little bit, trying to get it as natural and neutral looking as possible. All right, so that's what we got with just one flash and I think I mixed it up. This one was actually with the flash to the back left side because you can tell by the shadows on the uh, pillow. You could pretty much use that as a good to go photo, but we're gonna level it up a bit by compositing a few more layers. Okay, so we got a little bit of this kitchen in the shot too. So we're gonna bounce the flash just right up here, kind of back towards the camera so that it doesn't spill that way and show up in the frame. That's a good rule of thumb anyways, no matter where you're bouncing the flash, do it kind of back towards your camera a little bit. If you do it that way, a lot of times it's gonna have like a hot spot on the ceiling or something. So always good to avoid. And yeah, we're not trying to get that window view, so I'm not worried about it, but that should fill in the kitchen and get a really, really nice soft result. All right, so I'm using my 10 second timer to get a little further away and just bouncing it off that spot. And here's how it looks. Pretty good, but there's definitely some spots we're not gonna wanna keep. So make sure to watch to the end of the video to see how we're gonna do that in Photoshop. Okay, so we're gonna leave the settings the exact same way, but 
I'm just gonna do my flash straight towards the window. So I'm just keeping it on the fixed power or turning it up a little bit. And basically we're just gonna shoot it straight towards the window to where we get those clean lines around the actual window frames and kind of overexpose everything around it because that makes the editing super, super easy and fast. And that's obviously super important for this industry. <laughs> So here's how they look straight out of camera. I think because this is like an older house, the window's not super crystal clear, or maybe it's a little bit dirty. So it's not the best, but we can still pull in some clarity at least on the window frame. And on that lamp, we can bring in some nice saturated pretty colors. So just making a few adjustments, uh, copying over my settings from the other one with the flash and just adjusting that a little bit. You can adjust the white balance for the outside view too here if you want to. So here's all the five layers that we got. And as you can see, they're each a bit different and bring something different to the table. So we're gonna have plenty of room to work with this stuff in Photoshop. So first in Photoshop, we pulled up all the layers on top of each other and we're going to align the clips because I think I bumped the tripod a little bit, but it usually works pretty well. And I'm just gonna crop it in a little bit because now I have to. And I'm just gonna fix my rotation a little bit. I uh, didn't really need to do that in Lightroom because this one was pretty spot on. Just a little bit off. So first I'm gonna do some adjustments on the HDR photo. So pretty much all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of kind of dynamic contrast to it because it's a little bit flat. So I'm just using the burn tool and I'm going through and adding some shadows to the stuff that's a little bit closer to us so that it'll kind of draw the viewer through the photo if the foreground is a little bit darker and then it gets a little bit brighter and brighter and brighter as you look through the photo. So I've got this in the order that we shot it and I also added a darker ambient only layer at the top as basically an adjustment kind of negative fill layer and you'll see how we can use that in just a minute. So first thing we've got our main flash layer and then we've got our kitchen flash layer on top of it and all we need to do is go in and change the layer blending mode to lighten and that's just gonna take everything that's brighter on that layer compared to the layer below it. So once you change that setting, that's all you're gonna actually see. So you could leave that as is, or what I'm gonna do is add a layer mask and then paint out some of this stuff that I don't like. So sometimes the transition from the lightened layer to the one under it is a little bit weird and looks unnatural. So. I'm just kind of softening out some of those transitions, basically. My main goal for flash is to make it not obvious that there's flash. <laughs> so no like harsh shadows or weird shapes and stuff. Okay, now we're gonna do the opposite for the window layers. So we're gonna change the layer blending mode to darken and see where we're at. So normally that's pretty much all you have to do and then you can just mask out some of the extra stuff but for this one it's a little bit more tricky because it's such a huge window and it's kind of more complicated of a shape so I'm gonna have to go in and manually kind of find select this stuff so I just did a box around the big window and now I'm using the quick select wand to deselect some of these more complicated shapes. So sometimes that can work and help speed up the process and Photoshop does a pretty good job. Okay, so once I select that, I just make sure I am on the layer mask and I'm just gonna fill in everything that is not the window as black. So after that, all we're gonna have left on the layer is that window. But if you mess anything up, we can always fix it because we have that layer mask. I'm gonna go in and select the window frame and clean that up just a bit. The reason I did two shots on the window is because of that reflection in the top middle one. And I was trying to have a backup layer to where that wasn't gonna be in one of the shots. Compared to most windows, this one's a pretty challenging one. <laughs> and then I merged the layer just so we can work on that by itself, combined, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that up a little bit more and kind of adjust the saturation to where the window view looks a little bit better, the colors look better, and it has a little bit more contrast and kind of mask out some parts of it that look a little dark uh, to where it'll help with that overall composition. So just added a S curve to that, uh, changing the color balance a little bit to where it looks warmer. So that's pretty much it. So this is a fun trick. You can use the middle exposure for the HDR photo. So make sure this is on the top layer and all you have to do is fill in the whole mask as black to where it doesn't show up. And then we're gonna paint it in using the brush as white. So I'm just gonna pull down some of this ceiling stuff and pull down some of the foreground to where it's a little bit more dynamic of a photo. And I like to kind of fix it in stages. So I'll go through with a huge brush and get the big stuff taken care of. So like the ceiling, the floor, the walls close to you, I'll make them a little bit darker. And then I'll go back in and remove some of that to where it'll bring out some highlights in areas that I want to show up more. So maybe some more colorful stuff or you can kind of add some dimension to things. It's almost like you're painting or doing a drawing where you're pushing and pulling the shadows and the highlights until you eventually get them to where you want them to be. So I merged all that together and I'm just doing a couple final touch-ups. So I am kind of softening this shadow that was on the window frame from the flash to where it's not as harsh. The shadow came out a little bit too much on that one. Then I'm just retouching a couple spots on the couch using the cloning tool. Uh, you could use the healing brush for this also. But especially for velvet stuff, that makes it always look a little bit more fancy. All right, so here's what we got compositing all the layers together. So I think this looks nice. It doesn't look overly flashy. Uh, it looks pretty natural, kind of similar to how the natural lighting looked in real life. But for me, I think the colors typically turn out better when you use flash, just because you have a bit more control over things. But here's the HDR one. So I think it looks really good, but obviously there's color cast issues, like the walls are a bit yellow, the outside looks kind of blue. So uh, you could dial that in more, obviously, but I still think it looks really good. I think it looks natural and colorful and uh, I think it shows a space true to life. I know some people get some really, really great results with HDR, but to be honest, I don't have a ton of experience doing that. I've mostly always done flash. All right guys, that's it for this one. I'm gonna have these files downloadable so that you can try this out yourself and see what you think. Uh, but that's it, if you liked the video, I hope you'll support the channel by subscribing, turning on your notifications, and sharing the videos with other people in the industry. But anyways, thanks so much for being here, and look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.